Well, you'll now be able to track crime all over the Tri-Cities just by going online. Since it's now legal to smoke marijuana here in Washington, drug recognition experts in Franklin County and oil and fuel are spilling into the river. Now we're cruising above Riverton. The temperature is about 50 degrees in the air. They're shooting on the 400 block of North 1st Street. When they got to the scene. Officers found the 45-year-old male victim shot twice in the abdomen. Are you ready to get your parade on? Well, we are here at Action News. It's the Umatilla Landing Days. The partying is probably still going on in Miami as we speak. The Miami Heat are back-to-back -back world champions. What else can you say about extremely hot? I, I don't know. I don't know how to describe this weather. It's just too hot to describe. A Burlington Northern freight train derailed into the Wind River shortly after noon. We have two locomotives that derailed, one of which is in the uh, in the river. And we have about anywhere from uh, four to six cars that are derailed. The Hot Springs County Sheriff says only two engineers were aboard the locomotive and both were able to climb out of the train uninjured. The sheriff says a boulder the size of a tractor caused the derailment. All the rain we've had, it has slid down onto the track. The locomotive collided with it and uh, went into the river. It derailed into the river. The second locomotive derailed with it. Diesel fuel and oil are leaking into the Wind River, but Thermopolis City administrators say the town's water supply will not be affected. The town will operate on wells and a backup tank until the spill is cleaned up. Hot Springs County residents say they've never seen anything like this. It's crazy. I actually raft this canyon. I guide it, so it's, it's pretty amazing. I, I hope it doesn't affect the rafting. Police say that this is the third train they know of that is derailed in this canyon. Lindsay Adams, News 13 in the Wind River Canyon. I spoke with local smoke shop owners, pot smokers, and police to see how the legalization process might affect you. I have customers coming in all the time that I've never seen before. I mean, occasionally I'll walk by somebody and I'll think that I smell it. Despite the obvious rise in marijuana use since the drug became legal, once it starts to sell in stores, state lawmakers want to put a 25% tax on the drug. If you were to buy a 40 sack of marijuana and the government put their hand in it, you would get back a $10 bag of marijuana. The Washington State Liquor Control Board will regulate the production and distribution of marijuana. The State Office of Financial Management estimates the measure could raise $560 million a year in taxes. Tax rates are going to be ridiculous if they can even put in place a dispensary. Now that it is legal for adults to carry up to an ounce of pot here in Washington, Tim Adams, co-owner of Hippie Smoke Shop, has noticed a spike in local crime. Smashed up mailboxes and are doing Drano bombs in mailboxes in, in the area of Kennewick. A young Tri-Cities marijuana smoker prefers to keep his identity anonymous. We'll call him Alejandro. Alejandro agrees even if it is legal for him to smoke, the new law won't be making the community any safer. Because now it's not that they're trying to find pot, it's they're trying to find that access, that that excessive amount of pot that's bringing in crime to the Tri-Cities. Since it's now legal to smoke marijuana here in Washington, drug recognition experts in Franklin County have seen about a 50% increase in the number of drug-related DUI callouts countywide. A lot of people are very surprised to realize that you can be impaired on uh, illegal drugs and on, on uh, medication that's been prescribed by your doctor. Corporal Gordon Thomason is also a certified drug recognition expert and says marijuana DUIs are just as serious as driving while drunk. It doesn't matter if you're on uh, impaired on drugs or alcohol, you're impaired and you can get a DUI for either way. Now that it's legal to be high and kind of have it, people are going to, of course, people are going to abuse the right. And the solution? Simple. Be responsible when they're taking their medication and or drugs, and if it's including marijuana. You'll get a record, and then what happens? You go to prison. Go to school. Lindsay Adams, Action News in the Tri-Cities. Now the State Liquor Control Board is developing rules for the up-and-coming marijuana industry with the possibility of digital tracking of inventory to prevent diversion to the black market. Sales are set to begin late this year. Vicodin, uh, Oxycontin. Hydrocodones and um, methamphetamine. I used to sell myself for drugs, actually, because we were tight with money. 
and whatnot, and I needed my fix, and nobody could help me, so I would go sleep with somebody for some pills or some meth. Not only in Wyoming, but across the United States, prescription drug abuse now tops, uh, I think, cocaine, methamphetamine, um, and one other drug combined in, in terms of death. Over two years ago, three teenage girls were found dead in a Beaver Creek residence from a methadone overdose. Always tell her, you know, be good. You know, don't worry, Dad. And that's the last word she ever spoke to me. Riverton police say the majority of their search warrant arrests involve some form of substance abuse. We went to a restaurant. The girl at the counter just had white, powdery stuff around her nose. Fremont County doctors say snorting pills deteriorates the nasal cavity and causes harmful material such as talc to build up in the lungs, which can be fatal. Over in Lander, police say some residents are selling prescription drugs right out of their own homes. They have fraudulently obtained them from a uh, medical provider and uh, with those prescriptions and uh, then taken those prescriptions and sold them uh, for a profit. Police say they deal with several illegal prescription calls a week, but pill poppers in Fremont County say there is good reason for such high numbers. Riverton, you know, you can either go down by the Honor Farm or over over by uh, Walmart, you know, and just the reservation in general. I mean, I know of people where the grandma's selling weed, the mom and dad are selling weed, and the kids are selling weed. The Fremont County coroner says there were around 50 non-natural deaths in the county last year, and half of them were drug or alcohol related. But there are prevention efforts taking place. School programs, there are different things that are being done. Uh, people work on the health fairs that occur in the county. The primary abuse substance in many deaths is alcohol, followed by prescription drugs. Lindsay Adams, News 13 in Fremont County. Experts are trying to figure out what's killing bees in Oregon by the thousands. Target shoppers in Wilsonville discovered 25,000 dead or dying bees this week scattered across the entire parking lot. Are you ready to get your parade on? Well, we are here at Action News. It's the Umatilla Landing Days. The event kicks off with the downtown parade at 10.30 a.m. tomorrow. Most of us can think of a million things we'd rather do than mow the lawn. Speaking for myself right now because Jay enjoys it very much. Yeah, I enjoy it, but uh, you couldn't do it to, if somebody paid you, Lindsay, huh? I don't, think, I don't think you could pay me enough money to do that. I don't even know where to start, so it would be a disaster waiting to happen. The only time I actually did attempt to mow a lawn, yeah. Jay, um, my dad had a tractor, one of those four-wheeler lawn mowers. Sure. Yeah, I got on top of it and it wouldn't break, so uh, <laughs> I was traumatized after that. How'd you get off it? I don't remember. It was so traumatizing. Did you jump off and just send it I into think, the hedge? I think I jumped off and rolled a bunch of times and uh, it was kind of like an army move a right there. Roll. We begin this morning in the Lower Valley where deputies have a frightening mystery on their hands. A missing man, a burned car, and a skull in the trunk. The remains were found in the Sunnyside area while a tow truck was removing the car from private property. This is at Emerald and South Emerald Roads. Turning to Kennewick where family and friends are mourning the loss of a young soldier who paid the ultimate price. Private First Class Robert Ellis was killed in Afghanistan just weeks before he was set to finish his tour overseas. A Yak man convicted of trying to sell drugs will spend 10 years in prison. Jose Naranjo Lozano was busted by undercover DEA agents last year for trying to sell them five pounds of methamphetamine. The 24-year-old pleaded guilty to conspiracy to distribute that drug. And in more local news now, the Hanford cleanup effort is once again getting the attention of the White House. U.S. Energy Secretary Ernest Moniz was in the Tri-Cities for his first tour of the site. His visit comes days after a Hanford watchdog said the feds aren't doing enough to inspect the waste at Hanford. Secretary Moniz promised a plan to get rid of waste safely. He's also confident new radioactive tanks will be built by 2019. In more local news, extra patrols will be on local streets looking for drunk drivers. City, county and state patrols will all be making extra DUI crackdowns. The effort will begin this weekend and will continue throughout the 4th of July. We do have some good news for you this morning. Columbia Basin College is getting a lot of money to actually save some money. The school is getting more than one and a half million dollars from an energy grant. The goal is to create jobs and reduce energy costs. CBC will get energy saving equipment like new lights and water saving toilets. Statewide, the grant is expected to create more than a thousand jobs and will lower energy costs by almost $150,000.
Coming up later on this morning, Jay is trying to beat the heat with a bandana that's supposed to keep you cool for two hours. Sounds too good to be true, but he'll show you if it will work or not, and he'll test it out on his dog, too, coming up on Action News, so that sounds exciting. And in the meantime, let's check in with him. He's at the Weather Center. Jay, Nestle loved that bandana. I'm not going to give it away, but but she really liked it. You know, she's a, she's a happy dog. A new manufacturing business is expected to bring 50 new jobs to the area. Paragon Films purchased a 125 thousand square foot facility in Union Gap. The company has already hired about 25 people and officials expect to hire many more in the coming months. And staying on the job front in Pasco, where a new carrot processing plant will bring more employment opportunities as well. The project will be cut into three phases, the first being completed by October. 60 jobs will be created before the end of the year, and more than several hundred will be added once that project is complete in 2015. Grimway hired local construction companies as well to build the facility. Returning to Sunnyside this morning, where city leaders are asking you to help them pick a new city manager. Hollywood is mourning the loss of James Gandolfini. He's the Emmy Award-winning star of The Sopranos, plus an exclusive look at some upcoming movies, one starring a news anchor by the name of Ron Burgundy. Ring any bells? I'll have those stories and more in this morning's Ein Entertainment. James Gandolfini dies at age 51 while vacationing in Rome. According to HBO, the possible cause was a heart attack. Gandolfini cemented his place in Hollywood in the late 90s when he began playing the role of mobster Tony Soprano. He often said in interviews that he didn't think of himself as interesting, just a man doing what he called a silly job. Gandolfini is survived by his teenage son, his wife, and a baby daughter they just had back in October. Brad Pitt tries to stop a zombie invasion dead in its tracks in the summer thriller World War Z. Pitt plays former UN investigator Jerry Lane, who gets enlisted to lead the fight against a zombie pandemic that is threatening the world. When a zombie bites a person, they instantly become one, sprinting and clawing their way to the next victim. Usually happens in all zombie movies, but those ones look especially fierce. Pitt co-produced the $200 million action thriller, and he's hoping to turn it into a franchise. World War Z opens in theaters tomorrow. And staying on the movie front this morning, going from zombies to the newsroom. At this hour in the morning, I often feel like a zombie myself, but the long-anticipated Anchorman 2 is coming out. Paramount is giving fans a first-hand look at the upcoming Anchorman sequel. Will Ferrell is back as Ron Burgundy, and this time his San Diego news team moves to the Big Apple to work at a 24-hour news channel. I'm going to do the thing that God put Ron Burgundy on this earth to do. Have salon quality hair and read the news. That's exactly what I live for every single morning. And I think the name of that news team is Action News as well. What a coincidence that is. Anchorman 2, The Legend Continues, hits theaters in December. That is your Ion Entertainment for this Thursday morning. I'm Lindsay Adams for Action News. Now let's send it back over to Jay. Covering the nation for you this morning, the overseas markets are down following a big sell-off on Wall Street. News that Chinese manufacturing has slowed helped to trigger the slide. Analysts say investors are still reacting negatively to the announcement from the Federal Reserve that it may end its massive bond buying program at the end of the year. The Dow Jones lost 353 points. That's the biggest decline since since November 2011. Despite the negative news, analysts believe the economy as a whole is still on the rise. Meanwhile, Republicans and Democrats have reached an agreement to strengthen border security, which almost assures the immigration reform bill will pass in the Senate. The deal would almost double the size of the Border Patrol, as well as build 350 miles of new fencing and provide more drones for aerial surveillance. A vote on the legislation is expected to come within the next week. It will then head to the House, where passage is far from certain. And the partying is probably still going on in Miami as we speak. The Miami Heat are back-to-back -back world champions. The Heat beat the San Antonio Spurs 95-88 to to win Game 7 of the NBA Finals. LeBron James was named the MVP for helping lead his team to the victory. It is the second year in a row he's won the award. James scored 37 points and added 12 rebounds. Dwayne Wade added 23 points of his own. This is the third NBA title in Miami Heat history. And those are some of the nation's top stories this Friday morning. I'm Lindsay Adams, Fraction News. Now let's send it back over to Jay.